Hello, I'm Liam and welcome to my February allotment tour. In the video I show how the allotment is looking right now and talk about the jobs I've been doing and what I hope to do over the next few weeks. I'm starting the tour inside the Polytunnel because it's so cold outside, like it has been over most of the UK. There have been several days where it snowed but the snow hasn't settled. The ground is rock hard though, making it really difficult to work and over the last few weeks I really haven't done that many jobs. But what I have done is to do plenty of planning and I'm going to share that in this video and talk about what jobs I hope to get started over the next few weeks. So let's get going. The blueberry plants, let's have a look in here. There are a few buds developing on them but really they're not much more advanced than they were a few weeks ago on the January tour. Not surprising really considering how cold it's been. Next to the blueberries I have my garlic bed. Now these are looking very very good from the October sowing. I've had a little count out of the 65 cloves I planted only two haven't germinated and considering that was my homegrown garlic from last summer I am really really pleased with that and I'm looking forward to seeing how they develop over the next few weeks. Next to my garlic bed I have my old brassica bed and eventually after almost a year of growth for the first time my kale plants look as though they've succumbed to the weather. No surprise really because of the biting cold wind and the severe frosts we've had overnight. At the end of the bed there you can see that it's had the same effect on my cabbage plants which really are ready for composting now. It's on cold days like this that I really appreciate the jobs I managed to squeeze in at the end of last summer, digging over these beds and covering them up. They're covered with ground cover fabric and what I do in the spring is to lift up the ground cover fabric, fold it away and store it safely so I can use them year after year. Doing that means that as soon as the weather improves I can start using the beds with the minimum of digging allowing me to start growing quickly. Along from the old brassica bed I have my bed full of leeks. These are looking as though they're not enjoying the cold weather. I'm still hopeful that they are going to spring back in the spring and they'll start swelling up nicely. Although because of the prolonged period of cold weather that is by no means certain but that is what I'm hoping is going to happen. The cold weather also seems to have had an effect on my broccoli plants. They're certainly not as full of life as they have been in previous years. I think it's the wind and frost damage which is affecting the outer leaves. I am hopeful they will recover when the weather starts to warm up. Broccoli in the spring I think is one of the highlights of the year when it's successful. If I stand back here you can see that the bed immediately in front of me does need tidying up and along here another bed which I have prepared for use early in the spring and then I have the bed here which is covered in fleece which contains radish and perpetual spinach. I just have a look under the fleece to see how the plants are getting along. Let's take a look under here. I'm not sure how well this is coming out on the camera but the plants are looking just about alive. I'm hopeful of a recovery. The weather is taking their toll on them though. Like the broccoli, I hope when the warm weather arrives they'll be much much happier. The stall bed here I'm showing looks as though the plants are very much dormant. There are some green leaves on the sunny side of the bed the side of the bed that gets the morning sunshine. It's quite interesting that. Happier on this side of the bed than it is on the other. Wow, look at this. The rhubarb sheets are growing, but around the rhubarb sheets you can see the ice which is still on the ground. Now for me that shows how cold it's been over the last week. Usually as soon as the rhubarb starts to sprout, it rapidly rapidly grows but that has been stunted by the cold weather. It shouldn't be a problem as long as the cold weather doesn't continue for too much longer. 
but it may be a later harvest this year. Over to the apple tree, I'll scan up from the bottom. What you may see is that there are hardly any buds forming yet on the tree, so a spring blossom looks many weeks away. Next to the apple tree I have a water bat. I'm just going to show this now. Because the top of the water butt has a thick layer of ice on it, I'm just going to move that to see how thick it is. I'll just press down here. You may be able to hear the creaking coming through on the camera. I reckon that is half an inch to an inch thick. One of the jobs I have got done is to come down here and prune the fruit bushes. One person who saw the January video very kindly left me a comment about my blackcurrant bush. In the video I mentioned how large the buds were and they informed me that that was a sign of blackcurrant reversion which is a disease which isn't treatable. I mentioned that in this video because it's likely I'm going to have to dig up this blackcurrant bush but my strategy for this summer is to see if I can salvage a blackcurrant harvest and what I've done is to give the bush a really hard pruning which in itself will considerably reduce the harvest size but to see how effective that is at reducing the problem. If not the reversion disease apparently only affects blackcurrants and what I'll do I'll completely dig up this blackcurrant bush and I hope to replace it with a white currant bush. I love the taste of white currants I actually prefer them to blackcurrants. They're not as prolific, but the harvest you do get, I think, is well worth it. My strategy on the pruning, um, and this is a gooseberry bush I'm showing now, is to make sure that I've allowed plenty of room underneath the branches and around the plants so it's not touching the edge of the fruit cage, which allows air to circulate through the plant, which helps keep the plant and the fruit healthier. It makes it easier to pick fruit from the plant and allows me to walk around the edges of the fruit cage. Next to the fruit cage I have my cane fruit. If you've watched my other allotment tours you will have heard me say many times that I need to change the supports. This tabu plant here is swaying around in the wind and that problem only gets worse when it's covered in leaf. Now I have bought the new supports I just haven't put them in place yet and what I'm going to do is extend the frame of the fruit cage, replace this joint here, and then extend the fruit cage so it covers the row of raspberries I have immediately in front of me and the hybrid berry row behind that. That's a job which will take a few hours to complete and lots of holding poles with my hands. I'm leaving that until the weather warms up a little. These here are the poles that I will extend the fruit cage with. These are 26 millimeter poles, really strong poles, and they should withstand anything the wind throws at them. The poles are connected by the use of key clamps, which form the joints between the poles. This is an example here. The poles just push into one of the openings and they're multi-way, and to tighten them on the poles, you get an Allen key in there and that's it. You end up with a really strong connection and I also like the fact that you can do what I hope to do which is to remove the clamps and extend whatever you build if you want to in the future. I have created a video on how to build a fruit cage and I'll link to that here. And the last thing is to finish the tour inside the polytunnel one of the jobs I do need to do inside the polytunnel is to have a good tidy up. I have this old table here which I will place in the middle of the polytunnel and I'll put on top of the table my plastic seed houses that I'll use to germinate my seedlings this year. Another order that has arrived in the last few days are my uh, seeds. The seeds here aren't the full collection of seeds because I still have seeds left over from previous years but it's great to see that they've arrived. 
a quick look at what I'm hoping to grow this year and share and show on my allotment tours. For fruit, nearly everything I hope to grow, grow on perennial plants, canes or trees, and therefore do not need to be sown in the spring. The list includes plums, cherries, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, taybreeze, boysenberries, loganberries, apples, and not forgetting the first harvest of the year, rhubarb. Of my fruit, blueberries, strawberries and taybreeze were the most successful last year, but every year is different depending on the weather, problems that arise, and how quickly I get my nets up. For vegetables, it is a long list, and I don't start sowing until March. I know some people start sooner, but I've learnt my lesson many times, with really hard frosts in April, and sometimes even in May. I'll start with my tomatoes and chilies, hopefully on the 1st of March, and then build from there. The list includes Tomatoes of several varieties to provide fruit from late June to October. Chilli peppers, cucumbers, leeks, courgette, including a climbing variety this year. Summer and winter squash, runner beans and French beans, peas, including Monge 2, that grew excellently last year, onions, garlic that is already overwintering, and shallots. Also, a couple of varieties of potato, including the variety Picasso that I have not grown before, that I'm really looking forward to trying. It is an improved variety of cara, a variety that has previously done well on my plot. Compared to last year, I'm going to grow more French beans than Monge 2. Both were really successful, delicious, and provided a harvest over a long period. They have earned more space. Growing tomatoes in my polytunnel is what I most look forward to in the gardening year. Even more varieties this year, plus I'm giving space to chilies for the fun of growing them. Squash will also be a focus, whether cucumbers, summer squash, or squash for storing and eating over winter. I will also focus on the onion family, including garlic and shallots. Excellent for cooking, and easy to grow and store. All things considered, it is a long list, and I hope to share how I get on in these videos. You may also like to see the planning and growing resources section on my website. I'll put a link below the video. And that's it, that's the end of the February allotment tour. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please let me know by leaving a comment or hitting the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel in the usual way if you want to see more videos like this.